tonight, I have, uh, I brought some money with me tonight. And I guess, oh me of little faith, I only brought $50. Uh, but each of you tonight are going to receive a dollar. Sometimes when you talk on giving, you think it, it has a purpose, <laughs> uh, you know, to bless the church and all that. That's why I said all that beforehand. But I'll explain this a little bit later because it, it comes with strings attached, all right? So you got to hang around for that. You say, okay, he's going to. But it has nothing to do with me or the church. It has everything to do with Jesus. How's that? Tonight I want to talk about, thank you. Tonight I want to talk about living a generous life. Living a generous life. Generosity is giving your attention, time, abilities, money, and compassion freely to others. Generosity is not just financial. Being a generous person, and we're going to uh, look at all these ways. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I have quite a few scriptures for you tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 says, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave us as much as they were able and even beyond their ability entirely on their own. So here's a church that was experiencing some difficulties and trials. You relate to that maybe. And Paul said that church gave to his ministry. They gave the outreach. Not Many times when we give, uh, gentlemen, you probably, if you carry a wallet, a lot of, if you're under 40, you may not carry a wallet, carry a wallet anymore. Um, but in that wallet, gentlemen, we usually have folded up a nice crisp 5, 10, 20, 100, 50, I don't know, I don't know, I haven't looked in your wallet, you haven't looked in mine. But we carry that, what, for emergency purposes, just in case, and if you ever been to the store and your credit card won't run or something happens, the magnetic strip on mine broke and they couldn't run anything and I've got all these groceries and thank the Lord I had a little bit of stash so I could pay for what I really needed. And But we carry that around and, you know, if we were to give that to somebody, we probably wouldn't miss it. Next time we get paid, we put a little extra side, put it back in that wallet. That's not generous. That's just we have a little extra. Generous is given above and beyond. It's being, having that heart. Now there's some of us that, and I say us, probably not me included because I'm, my wife says I have the gift of suspicion. Now it's not a spiritual gift. Don't look it up in, <laughs> in any of Paul's writings. It just simply means when somebody starts that big, long conversation and they're about to ask you for money, my mind is thinking, okay, what do you really want this for? Have you ever come back? But sometimes God just prompts you and says, you need to give this. Generosity is not just giving for giving's sake, but it's being having a generous heart. And Paul said the Macedonian church did that. Galatians 6.10 it says, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. As we have opportunity, let us do good. Proverbs 11.25, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. You, you've heard the saying, give and it will be given back to you. You've, uh, you've probably told your kids or your parents told you this. Uh, do unto others as you would have them do to you. One of my friends put it this way, do unto others before they do unto you, but that's, that's not. Matthew 5.16 says, let your light shine before men that they will see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The first point tonight, give generously through your thought life. You ever thought about what you think about? 
Is that a double? Yeah. What 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 runs through your mind? When you stand in the mirror, what is running through your mind? Many times it's I can't is that me? <laughs> I saw one of my kids posted a picture a while back, and it was me uh, holding one of the kids, but it was from behind me, and I said, am I that bald? I thought it was somebody else, but it ended up being me. I guess I am. First Chronicles 28.9, David said, as, you, as for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father, serve him with a loyal heart, and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. God knows our thoughts. God knows the intent of our heart. So let's set our mind on those things we should. And let's have thoughts that are generous. In other words, if you're constantly t talking down to yourself, you need to reverse that trend. You need to start, what does God say about you? He loves you. He cares for you. He wants the best for you. I, I, I think I, I picture grandchildren more so now that I have five, and I don't want to do, I don't want to say anything that would hurt them. I don't, I don't want to, I, I want to be careful with what I say to them, how I respond to them, how, if, if they do something wrong. As a parent, I don't know if I was that diligent, but I, I see it more after seeing my own kids do some things. I'm like, hey, you know, I probably should have done that better. But that's, that's what God, God thinks the best of us. God thinks his thoughts are good to us all the time says in Jeremiah 29, 11, God said, I know the plans I have for you. Give you hope and a future. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, what, whatsoever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. He's given us a list of things. Here's what not to think about. No, he's saying this is what you should be concentrating on. So when those thoughts come in, does it line up with this scripture? Whatever things are just, whatever's pure, the enemy bombards us with impure things. I was watching the British Open. How many golfers we have out here? You know, the okay. It's watching the British Open with my seven-year-old grandson. You would think it's, a, I mean, uh, worry-free TV as far as uh, what's coming on the screen. No. They did a little segment, I don't know how long it was because I had to turn it, on streaking. You know that 70s trend? Like, what are you doing? It, I'm like, I can't, you can't watch anything anymore, right? You just want to, and my, my grandson's eyes got this big. I'm like, we're not watching that. Turn your, put your head down. <laughs> Golf, you, you'd think, anyway, whatever's just, Satan tries to come in in any way, right? Whatever is pure, whatever is pure, when, when the enemy attacks and them impure thoughts, impure ways, put it under the blood. Amen. Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, we don't need to, there's enough bad in the world to tell everybody else about the bad that's going on. I mean, watch two minutes of news and you've got enough bad to do you for a week. If there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, then think on these things. That's what he wants us to think about. That's a generous thought life. Number two, give generously through your words. Ephesians 4.24, put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. 
Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, for we are all members of one another. Speak the truth. Uh, one version says, speak the truth in love. And sometimes we want the truth just to hit them upside the head like a two-by-four, right? <laughs> we need to speak it in love. We need to speak it in love. Acts 15.31 it says, when they read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. Judas and Silas, also being prophets themselves, encouraged and strengthened the, the brethren with a lengthy message. <laughs> you thought you didn't like long-winded sermons. They were in the Bible too, right? So it encouraged, what they said encouraged and strengthened the body of Christ. Man, I wish people would say, you know what? What you said encouraged, I hope tonight, <laughs> what you said encouraged me. It strengthened me. It gave me something to stand on. That, you know that's the Spirit of God working because that's not natural for us. But in Christ, it, it becomes that way. So after they had spent time there, they were sent their way from the brethren in peace to those who had sent them out. But look at that verse 31. When they read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. There are five love languages. I'm not going to get into them tonight, but some, some of you have a, it's really what touches your heart. For me, it's acts of service. It's not really words or, what, what you do means a lot to me, right? If you go out of your way to help me or help the church, whatever, it just means, it means a lot. Others, it's words. You can say the slightest thing, and it means the world to them, or it can crush them. Uh, and if God prompts you to write a card, or call someone, or pray over someone, let, the, let, the, let God speak to you through those words, and speak to their heart. And it means a lot. We receive uh, here at the church, many times we get thank you cards from folks. And um, when, when they've gone through a difficulty and the church has been there, and, they, and sometimes we just tape it out there on the information booth for everybody to read. The words are just, they're powerful. What, what happens in our lives and what God can do through us. But encourage one another with those words. The, the Bible says there's life and death in the tongue. We can cut someone down. You ever been angry at someone and you just pulled it all out and you just let them have it? I don't know what the circumstance was, but I got angry at my mother. If you met my mother, you would say, why in the world would you get mad at her? Because she, she's one of the sweetest ladies in the world. But as a teenager, all right, let me just caveat that. It wasn't recently. Um, I got upset, and I wanted to hit her where it hurt, and that was telling her I didn't love her and telling her she wasn't my real mother. Now, a real mother will know that that is my child. <laughs> and with tears in her eyes, she looked at me and said, it doesn't, I love you no matter what you say. I love you. No, that's real love right there. And, what, and I know it hurt because I've apologized over and over, and she's going to watch it again when this comes up. But she loved me right through it. So when folks maybe respond to us in that type of way, when they're angry and bitter and they fight at us, we got to let the grace of God come and help us to love them in return, even though we don't see anything back. But a, being generous through your word is to not jump right in there with them and throw those insults back. It's very tempting. <laughs> but boy, when that starts happening, just start praying, Lord, give me, give me a peace. Give me a peace. I was in a extreme difficult situation and the person across from me had done some very horrible things 
And my carnal man wanted to get up and I, I won't use the word strangle because I wanted to hit him and make it hurt, you know, but, but the Holy Spirit, I just prayed under my breath, Lord, help me in this moment. And I felt like a weighted blanket covered me in a peace and I just I couldn't move and I, the peace of God just came it's unbelievable because I wanted to say <laughs> and physically do things but the Holy Spirit moved in so when you're going through a difficulty when you're facing those types of trials and pray Lord give me the grace to respond correctly I have we can build up or destroy. We can hurt or heal with our words. And I have hurt people hurt others. People who are wounded and hurt will hurt others because they're lashing out. I was uh, doing some yard work months ago, and uh, I moved something in the yard, and the and I had, a, I think it was a shovel in my hand, and right out from what I moved came this snake. And I know you're not supposed to kill all of them. But my first reaction when I saw something moving was, and I put that blade right, right in the middle, cut him in half. But he wasn't done. <laughs> he, he, latched on to that shovel because that's all that shovel just hurt me and I'm going to bite that shovel he didn't get anywhere and then just a few strikes later he got nowhere <laughs> but immediately you know a animals will do the same thing and but we as people will do it too when we're hurt so if you're in a in a time and a season where you're hurt Pray through that and let God help you with what to say or what not to say and not to lash out. Be generous with your words. Be kind with your words. Be loving and caring. Give generously through your influence. Give generously through your influence. Philippians 3.16 says, However, let us keep living by the same standard to which we have attained. Brethren, join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. For many walk of whom I often told you and tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. But he says, walk Join in following my example and observe those who walk according to your pattern. In other words, he's saying, follow me as I follow Christ. If we're not living right, we don't want anybody following us. If we're not doing what's right, we're hoping. Have you ever done something and your children mimic that and they... Uh, I had twisted my ankle one time, and one of my boys was following me, and I had a little hitch in my step. And I turned around, and the three-year-old was doing the same thing. And he wasn't hurt, but he was imitating me. I'm like, oh, i gotta be, got to be careful. How much more is that for those of us that are walking with Christ? People are watching. They want to see how are we reacting in those situations. How are we responding? Are we lashing out? Are we turning to Christ? Are we living it out correctly? What path are we showing our children to walk in? What, what are we leading the way? And you think, well, I have, who, who am I leading around? I don't have any kids. I don't have, there are children in this church that are watching you and I. And when I say children, I don't just simply mean 18 and younger. <laughs> They're young believers watching everything we are, everything we do. Are they who they say they are? They're watch watching us when we're in front, when we're talking. What, 
Are, are they who they say they are? Are they living out what they say? One of the, one of my biggest emphasis in my own life, because it, I've been a public style of ministry where I'm up in front and we're leading worship, we're preaching, we're doing all this. I wanted to be the same person in my home as I was in front of everybody here. Because if I'm one way in front of people and I act different at home, if I'm kind and nice here and I'm a tyrant at home and my kids don't even like me, then they're going to reject the God I claim I serve. They're going to reject everything I ever preached, whether it's true or not, because I'm not living it out. So let's live it out. Num the next one, give generously with your time and attention. We know that our children value more our time than they ever do any gift we could ever give them. Sitting down on the floor, I've got a, my grandchildren are seven, four, three, two, and one. That one-year-old, you could buy a thousand-dollar toy. I don't know if they make them that. <laughs> you could buy a very expensive toy. It doesn't matter. You sit down on the floor and roll a little ball to him, and he gets the biggest smile on his face. Now, I wish the older ones would appreciate the cheap toys. Too. <laughs> Just spending time. What do you think our Heavenly Father wants from us? We, we think if we do this, we do this, we do this. He wants to commune with us. He wants to relate with us. He wants, to, he wants us to know who he is. He knows all about us. But he wants us to discover who he is. Whatever you do, do your work heartily. as for the Lord rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive re the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. Acts chapter 3. But Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze on him and said, Look at us. And he began to give him his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I don't possess silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, walk. And seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were strengthened. And with a leap he stood upright and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them. He went with them. He followed them. He was watching their example. They were showing him. We have a little bit of silver and gold. I don't even know if you could label that today. We have some paper. All the money in the world can't buy you happiness. The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You could be the richest person, give your kids a... When, when you pass or retire and you give your money away. It's, it, it burns up. You can't take anything with you. But what we put in each other with Christ, how we live our example, how we share Jesus, how we walk him out and show them is so much more valuable, is so much more. Pastor talked about the other, the other, I don't know, last week sometime about the churches in Africa that work all day and they have nothing and they come and they stand they walk and walk and walk to get to church, and then they come into service, and it's all about Jesus. Same thing for those of us that went to Honduras with us. I mean, you should see some of the places they live in. They sweep the dirt of their house. I mean, they. But because they have Jesus, it's not about material things. America has made it about material things. It's about eternity, about him. Give generously by sharing your stuff. If anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat also. I just stepped on a few toes, right? I mean, whoever forces you to go one mile, 
go with him too. This is, the, this is a hard one for me. I don't know about you. But man, I, I, I spent some hard labor earning my stuff, right? I, uh, I, and I don't value stuff over God, but that, that's, that's mine, right? <laughs> I don't open my garage door and say, hey, neighbors, come get you what, get a, whatever you want. I had a neighbor, she moved away recently, and um, she wanted to borrow an extension cord to cut her shrubs. And she was out there. She had like a 10-foot, one of those uh, Christmas tree type. I mean, you, you could see the third prong hanging out the top. I didn't even have an adapter for it. And I, she couldn't go so far, reach all the shrubs. And, and I said, are you having trouble? And she said, well, I don't have an extension cord long enough. I said, well, you can borrow mine. So I took my... I was pretty new, 100-foot extension cord, wrapped up real neat, gave it to her and said, when you're done, just put it on the front porch and I'll get it. I come back after been, being out and it's laying on my front porch in pieces because she was running that. <laughs> I hope she didn't get electrocuted, but... and. Uh, she saw I was home, came and knocked on the door and apologized over and over. She said, I wasn't paying attention. I just went, and she had clumped the whole thing like on the shrub and just went right there. <laughs> oh, man. She said, how much does it cost? I said, don't worry about it. A single mom. I ended up uh, for a while mowing her lawn for her because her mower broke. You know, it's just things. Now, the next time she borrowed something, I was trying to be very clear with her. Now, be careful. <laughs> but, you know, be generous with those things. Some of us have more than we had ever need, or, you know, be generous. The last one, and it's the one everybody's waiting on, the finances. Luke 6.38, you say, oh, here it is. He's going to talk about giving. Yes. <laughs> Give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. How you value, what you value. I have three points here. Thank God for his provision through your tithe. Many, and I, this sermon isn't about giving, but let me, I, I have this in here. Honor God with 10% and watch God bless the other 90 like you never believe. This is not about new life assembly and putting put money in our account you got to know our heart here if you honor God with that amount he will bless you I we're getting fence estimates we have to put a fence in where the where you can see the trailer park now where we took those trees down and I talked to a gentleman and uh, he said I give churches a discount and he told me his price he said, the reason I do that, when I give the church a discount, and I, he said, I don't make what I do with everybody else. He said, but in, in no time, I get more business than I can handle because I've given to God. And that's, that's, what we're to, that's, that's God. God isn't paying us back for something. Everything we have is from Him anyway. And what we're saying with 10%, and you say, man, I can't, I can't do that. All right. <laughs> I'm saying, Lord, I recognize everything I have has come from you. If you've ever worked on a budget, here's how you do it. You, you take 90% and you budget 90%. You set that 10% aside. The Bible says, see if God won't pour out a blessing. The next one, honor him 
in your offerings, water offerings, anything above and beyond. The last one, demonstrate God's love by giving generously to others. Demonstrate his love by giving generously, generously to others. There's a parable of the workers in the vineyard. And the owner of the vineyard hired workers early in the day and said, well, you, they hired him at one denarius. All right? You work all day, that's your pay. But he kept hiring people till the end of the day. Let's say they worked... 7 to 5 or 8 to 5. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon, he was still hiring laborers, and they were working one hour, and they were going to get paid the same amount. Now, you and I say, (laughs) that's not fair, right? But that's what they had decided to do. That was their choice. I, I, I worked for that. It was those who had labored all day complained. In the natural, I say, yeah, I mean, you you didn't, you work very little Matthew 20:13 but he answered one of them said i'm not being unfair to you didn't you agree to work for a denarius take your pay and go i want to give the one who was hired last the same as i gave you don't i have the right to do what i want with my own money or are you envious Because I'm generous. Now, this is God. All right? And let's throw money out of the equation. This is about walking with him and serving him. I think about the people who served God all their life, gave everything to God. It's like the, the prodigal son and the older brother, just every day laboring, and then some Johnny-come-lately, if you will, get saved at the last minute on their deathbed, and they're going to receive the same reward, or they're going to receive the same heaven or be in there just as you and I. Not reward, sorry. I believe this is what he's talking about, not necessarily money. The gift is there. It's a free gift for all. And whether we get saved, and my goodness, those that lived a hard life that get saved at the last minute have lived a hard life. But if you gave your heart to Jesus early, you've lived a peaceful life. I mean, it hadn't been bed and roses, you know, a bed of roses. It hadn't been the best, but there's a peace of God that passes all understanding. So let me encourage you. God is generous. Receive what he has for us. Work hard. I, I think of Martha and Mary. You know, Martha was busy, 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 working, working, working. And she was mad because Mary was up there worshiping Jesus. She should be in here helping. The first church, uh, better be careful, this is on tape, right? Uh, One of the churches my wife and I were at, (laughs) uh, I was just starting as youth pastor, and she was the youth pastor's wife, and and they always had these fellowships at the end of uh, one Sunday night a month. And we didn't know the first time there, and we're just, you know, enjoying. And this young lady, as being the new youth pastors, wanted to talk to my wife. And she pulled her aside, and she began to counsel with her. That young lady told her at that moment she was pregnant. I mean, this is our first Sunday night on the job, and this big revelation. So she's spending a lot of time with her. But there were some ladies in that kitchen that were serving and doing all this, and they weren't happy with the new staff member's wife because she wasn't in there helping with everybody else. Had no idea what's going on. Monday morning, before, before work, I, we get a knock on the door. It's the pastor, and we're getting reamed out. I'm like, what church did I sign up for? <laughs> Uh, many we, we worry so much what everybody else is doing. Take care of your own, right? And we don't know the circumstances. We don't know what they've been through. We don't know. The lady that poured out the 
the ointment on Christ at his burial. They were saying, you could have sold that money. You could have done, done all this with that. You could have fed so many of the poor. And Jesus rebuked them and said, you don't know. She's prepared me for burial. That's my interpretation. But don't be envious of what God is doing for everybody else. Be generous in your thoughts. All right, practical ways of being generous. Tonight, I'm going to give everyone here a dollar. That's not a lot of money. In fact, I'm, we might have, we might be able to give two dollars to everybody, but what we're going to, uh, what I want to do, we're going to pray over this dollar. And we're going to ask God, does he want you to add anything to it, right? You can add 4, 9, 49, 99, 999, uh, 9,999. I don't know what, what God's going to prompt you to give. And pray for God to lead you to someone to bless. All right? This is putting our faith into action tonight. Give whatever that amount is, whatever God lays on your heart, to someone this week, to whomever the Spirit of God leads you to. A person could be a neighbor, a stranger, a person in line, a checkout, a waiter, anyone. But do not give it anonymously. Many times we want to just slip it in and walk away and nobody knows who gave it, all right? This isn't that opportunity because we want to be we want to be purposeful with this. I want you to give it by sharing that God has been generous to you and he wants to show you his love. So you're telling them that I want to show God's love by giving you this. Now whether it's a dollar, it's not really the amount. If God lays something else on your heart, says I want you to give them such and such an item. Why do I want to do that? This is, I'm giving you this. This is not church money. This is my personal money, all right? And I just want to clarify that. I got that. So my blessing is giving this to you. And many times when we, when we give something to someone, there's, we have some motive, we have some, the only motive that I want you to have is to just be generous to someone and show them God loves them. We could, you know, you don't need to invite them to church, but you, de you do need to let them know that God has prompted you to give them this money. They need, if you have opportunity to share your testimony, to share anything about Jesus, take that opportunity. God will open the door, all right? And the, you need to pray over it. I feel, I want you to say something like this. I feel God wants me to be generous to you today by giving you this. God has blessed me with so much. I want to encourage you today with a small blessing to tell you that he loves you.